Also, um, I did uh, change the, uh, the sprite size to 32 by 32. I had it originally a 64 by 64, but this thing is too large. And so I also, uh, you know, same thing with the uh, sprites of the, the ghosts, which uh, all of them are in 32. I also added a fifth ghost. Just to uh, put some challenge in the um, whoever plays this game. Um, also, um, the pellet, which is uh, eight by eight. The added a core, which I'll explain later. Power pellet, which is uh, 16 by 16, which is uh, twice as big as the pellet, and I have um, bonus, which is the uh, the animation uh, of each uh, fruit. Add number uh, the zero is just default. Um, I. I didn't put any image in there, but one through ten, I uh, have the cherry, strawberry, and uh, was it orange, apple. I have um, a grapefruit, banana, a plum, and uh, let's say a ship and a bell, and it last is the key. And basically, from 11 to 20 are their corresponding um, points. Uh, like, for example, the cherry is worth 100 points, the strawberry is worth 200, and down to image 20, which is the, uh, um, the key, is worth 5,000 points. Okay, moving on. Uh, the points which is basically the same as the bonus uh, but the difference is the points is just for a, a tracker uh, this is like size of the point is 75% in scale from the original 100% of which is uh, 24 by 24 and uh, Pac-Man uh, it's just a life, uh, so each life uh, icon corresponds to one life of Pac-Man, and which basically just for drawing purposes in the room. Okay, like for example, if I uh, play this game, Basically, we only got like I uh, took initiative and try to uh, build the maze already. Uh, just said time, and basically what I did here was uh, I had everything. Uh, curl, uh, I made a, a tile, which is this. And 
basically constructed the maze uh, using the tile pattern and so like for example this corner right here so I you could use this to fill it up and then after you um, fill up the, the, the pattern the maze pattern then you go to objects and and you block it you just basically Cover it up with walls, and if I go on a snap 32 by 32, you can see each uh, each block is covered with wall according to uh, size, and um, in every a snap 16 by 16 on the inside it's basically the same with the pellet each so you can see and like I said I, I had a um, I had um, five ghosts in here fit on this ghost house and I got my Pac-Man and uh, I have um, before I constructed the maze uh, I have a object named controller I uh, mean control basically it attracts everything the point system and everything in the game doesn't have any um, image, a sprite image, it's just uh, to track uh, like uh, the lives, you, at the beginning of the game your, your lives set to 3, the score is set to 0, and the default image, uh, so it's Pac-Man, is in the maze. And all the variables you initialize them. Uh, when I recorded the, my first video, I didn't know it took uh, one hour and seven, um, ten minutes to have it recorded. So I'm trying to make uh, this second video as brief as possible and uh, try to finish up my video. So hopefully I'll explain everything thoroughly and if you have any questions just uh, drop me a line in the comments. Uh, anyways I'm gonna include the game and also the, the uh, game file so if you want to tweak whatever, uh, do whatever with it, uh, it's up to you. And so pretty much uh, I'll be covering each uh, object, I mean, uh, object, and and uh, whatever I did with this to make make the game. Um, like for example, the, this is the background for as soon as the game ends, and uh, you need the tile to put your your background. Or the, the high score so I just made this and like I said before I had my tile which is uh, 32 by 32 and if you wanted to select uh, any image as a tile you have to put a check mark and you have to declare what size is your tile so in order for you to use it as a tile and I got my background which is the standard black 64 by 64 which fill up the back of the, um, the background of the game as far as scripts uh, I have a uh, this is my ghost AI which I copied from um, uh, one of the games that came with the game maker 
Uh, I know the the uh, ghost movement is very complicated, and I'm not gonna give in, I'm gonna go and <laughs> try to recreate what's already been created. So I just do this simple algorithm. Um, uh, you know, when uh, it goes it goes into a collision with the wall, and you know it's. It's good enough for me. I mean, if you wanted to do more, it's up to you. <laughs> and uh, I have um, a script for the um, the fruit. So basically, like I said before, I have uh, ten fruits or or ten images for the bonus. Uh, first was one hundred. So basically, uh, uh, for each. Uh, for each uh, maze that you completed is it's one count so when you go to the next stage I mean the, once you complete the maze you can go to the next maze and it's gonna be count two so and this is switch statement so when you when you grab the go uh, the, the fruit then it, it designates it with the whatever f the corresponding um, points for that so that's what I did Okay, so all right. So I guess I covered uh, all the sprites. Like I said, I had uh, added a fifth ghost, and background sounds. Uh, I have sounds for everything, um, like the pellet chomp when it's chomping the pellet, the Pac-Man's death sound when you eat the fruit. Intermission, so when you complete a maze, um, they have power pellet. Get ready, which is basically when you start the game, you have to hear that uh, Pac Man ready. And you got scared mode. When he eats a power pellet, then he goes to a scared mode. And or reverse when you start the game, you got normal mode. Uh, the ones in red it means that are they they are in loops. So uh, so I have to make it uh, that you can use it as a loop. You have to change it to multimedia player. So basically, if you look at this, uh, get ready. It's just normal sound. But for uh, loops, you need to change it to. Uh, Background, you got high score, title, and back, uh, background. Uh, okay, go over the ghost AI through the chump streak. Chump streak basically when uh, when Pac Man uh, eats a, a power pellet, and basically if you have um, uh, during that phase uh, when he eats a pellet. Uh, for each consecutive uh, uh, ghost that he chomps, it's uh, the the amount of points doubles. So, like.
it for example the first chop is 200 and then the second chop is times 2 of that which is 400 the third one would be times 2 of 400 is 800 and then 1600 and 3200 because I got 5 ghosts in here Moving on to the, the draw score, I put a font uh, size 25, which be uh, on the top of the game where it tracks your score. Um, I use that for that, and uh, point font, which is just a 12 size 12 font for the fruit and the ghost so when he eats a ghost and you have a display uh, uh, the point that you're getting from eating okay moving on to the object uh, like I said I have the control which has all these let me uh, explain each one of these um, at first when you uh, when you create the control object uh, an event create and you initialize all your variables like I said yeah I, I set up the three lives you can put it whatever lives you know, how many you want you when you start on the game set the score to zero uh, you have to change the pac-man um, to uh, stationary precision I'm uh, just facing right sub image zero and speed of zero You could you could do the with the rest of these if you want, um, but blinky, and you could you can do this and pinky. These are my variables. Uh, I have a global x coordinate, an array, and a global y coordinate on an array. Uh, I use this for tracking where is the current position of Pac Man as soon as he chumps a ghost. And I wanted to capture that, that exact coordinate so it, I could display the, the points. Uh, that you earn from eating that ghost and you have a variable freeze uh, that I used for when um, Pac-Man is dead then um, I want everything to freeze so he can't move or even a ghost that cannot move I use that variable for that and I have draw blinky uh, for um, for tracking the the, uh, the how many consecutive ghosts that he chomps after eating a pellet, uh, so every one of these I have um, um, a tracker like for Blinky, Pinky, Inky, Clyde, and Sue. Uh, I have a tracker for. Uh, chomp fruit so when he chomps a fruit and um, I have a global value uh, global count count is basically the uh, um, for each maze you completed it's this one count I count two uh, basically for every ten counts you get one uh, icon uh, which is a key 
so basically like from um, if you got like five keys um, if you see five keys on the bottom left of the, the Pac-Man game it means that you completed 50 levels so um, okay let's see here a global frenzy uh, this is the state where uh, Pac-Man is on the on jumping uh, spree so you know to track like how many uh, ghosts can he eat and before the you know the power pellet uh, time ends is scared it's when uh, the ghost in the state of when they're scared when uh, Pac-Man eats the pellet Fruit timer, which I use for as soon as he eats the, the fruit, then I this is my alarm for uh, setting up um, uh, the time when uh, the display text disappears, and I have timer for you know blinky as well, pinky, which is the same thing, uh, which I'll explain later. The step event basically I have all these I'm starting with the the score if a score is smaller than uh, 20,000 I just um, I just put this uh, condition for the first uh, for the first uh, um, bone any life bonus that you get like I don't know, the, the, the first when the Pac-Man uh, reached 10,000, um, he gets uh, one life, uh, but, uh, but you know, even in the step event, uh, when he goes really fast, that, uh, that when you, like for example, you have uh, 999, I mean 990, uh, points and then you eat let's say uh, an item which is worth 5,000 so basically if you if you had a condition that okay if you put if you um, if you reach 10,000 then you already missed that chance so what I did I exaggerated the what I'm looking for so in the first 20,000 so when he hits this condition, so basically when he uh, um, when he hit uh, ten thousand points, then it's gonna go here. If the value is larger than nine nine thousand nine hundred ninety nine, then um, then you add one life and you and you get the sound uh, the one sound bonus. And then, and I set the variable global variable to zero, so it resets. And so the next, the consecutive uh, life after the ten thousand would be. Uh, I put a target at uh, uh, nineteen thousand nine hundred ninety nine, which is the uh, same as twenty thousand. So when the global value hits twenty thousand, every twenty thousand he'll get one life. After that, I have this to track the number of instants in the maze. So if it down get down to zero, um, the pellet zero, then it's gonna go to the the statement. Uh, if the sound um, is playing, uh, stop the scared sound sometimes when you have uh, when you eat like the last uh, the, like the last pet because the, the power pellet is also considered a pellet so if you eat the power pellet and you have that sequence where uh, is doing the sound the power pellet sound I wanted it to stop since it's the last um, that's that you know that since that's considered as the last pellet so I had that in just in case and all
also here. Uh, I had the uh, play intermission, so each maze completed is going to do the intermission sound. And I had a delay of 4000, so after the delay, it's going to go play the normal siren. And it's going to go here. If next room exists, since we only have one room in the game, I had it. Um, it the program to go to down here uh, go to room maze so basically you know if you wanted to tweak this uh, game um, um, game maker file and if you want to create multiple maze uh, it's up to you but it should this code should work for that so you don't have to do anything in here. Okay. Um, what else? Set variable global count. So basically, after you complete the maze, it's gonna track. It's gonna add one uh, to the count. So make sure that it's relative. And also down here, if uh, um, hold on here. Add a condition. If the global count is equal to larger than 10, which is basically once it hits 11, it's going to go to this uh, uh, calculation. You're going to set the global count to 1, and then, and then you're going to start again from one so so it never goes over it never goes over let me which let me explain to you much better uh, if I like for example uh, here's the global count two okay let's say we completed like 15 maces already so that's considered like one global count and five maces. So if I do the count here and then put this five and play the game. Already, and then on the right, on the right, bottom right, you got like five fruits, which means you got this like the fifth uh, maze that you already completed, plus the ten, so it's like total fifteen maze. Okay, um, which I'm gonna put this back to one. Okay, uh, I think I cover everything in the step. The end step. Uh, basically, I had all the timers, like I said. So when he eats a ghost, oh, let me uh, let me show you. Woo! <laughs> 
a ghost. The, the first ghost was 200, the second one was 400, and the third one was 800. So basically, after that, I set the timer uh, to, to 100. step for each one of these uh, if I go to the uh, Pac-Man's mouth basically the collision is on the Pac-Man's mouth not on the Pac-Man uh, reason why I do that is to to you know it's much better uh, for uh, for Pac-Man to, you know, when, when he plays the game, because uh, to uh, if he um, if he had a collision with directly with the ghost using the sprite Pac-Man, just a slight uh, collision, basically he's dead. But if you had a, uh, a collision from the center of Pac-Man which I use, the mouth is the core. If you look up my core sprite, uh, I'll show you. Basically, it's in the center of Pac-Man. And so basically, you know, if, if there you have a ghost uh, and you try to collide with Pac-Man, uh, since Pac-Man is 32 by 32, when he gets to this area here, which is 32 by 32, then you know Pac-Man's dead. But if he's colliding with the core, then you got more space left, and you know he, he doesn't die that often. Same thing with you know like when he eats a pellet. So when he eats a pellet. When a collision starts from here, then it's like, you know, uh, it's more realistic to when you eat the pellet down here. So it's like you have creating an illusion that he's really eating a pellet or, or um, fruit or anything. So anyways, um, let's get back to uh, control. Explain all that. The game start. Uh, he, like I said, uh, at the beginning of the game, I put uh, sh this one should be no show. Don't show. Uh, I don't need to show the score. I don't need to show the lives. I don't need to show the health. So I'll be tracking it from the drawing, uh, and then you got that get ready sound, and you got the sleep 4000 after sleep, uh, and it's gonna do the normal sound, the siren. Okay, when there's no more lines, and basically displays the high score, the background, the the high score, which is the one I showed you earlier. this um, which you can select from down here and then border show you can change whatever color you want what font so, and then on the draw event uh, you got your draw score which is the top And, uh, yeah, it's on the right side, top right side of uh, the game. You got your draw lives, basically the uh, how many lives you have. Yeah, it's on the top left, and here, and these are uh, when he's chomping a fruit. It, these are the designated uh, points that you get for each 
fruit based on per level or per base count. same thing it's just a I put uh, code uh, down here it's it's when the Pac-Man eats the ghost and these are the corresponding points uh, like I said before the you know like uh, like for example for um, global draw blinky is larger than zero it means when uh, when he eats a ghost and uh, then you find whatever the corresponding points If it's the point is equal to one, then I'm gonna draw two hundred based on the coordinates of Pac-Man during the time when he eat that ghost, and this is how I set it up. And it's just I just replicated this for each uh, of the other ghosts. Everything's the same. Except for the uh, the names, see like this one's Inky. All of these are Inkies to here. Now it starts with another one. This is Clyde's, and so on. Okay, now I'm done with that. Pac-Man, the object Pac-Man, basically is just collision with the wall and the door the door is the, the ghost house uh, once he has contact with the, the door uh, it, it basically changed the instance to door closed which door closed is the same as the parent to uh, to the wall so we can't get in Got uh, port left and port right. Uh, since the movement is based on um, uh, it based on um, per frame. For example, here check if uh, if the left four paces to the left is uh, available. Um, then um, then you move direction four paces. I didn't use the uh, if you go other and go uh, outside room and you're gonna use this horizontal or vertical I didn't do that but instead what I did was uh, I used the port if you look in uh, my maze, oops. if you look on the bottom, uh, bottom um, down here, if it says uh, that it's port right, so it's gonna port over here, uh, and then and if I hit this, if Batman collides with this, it's gonna port left. It's gonna jump over here and for that I just use this um, jump and I, I just calculated the point where he needs to go when he when he ports left same thing with the right okay and the mouth I have a 
step event and this is the, the code for x equals pacman dot x and then you got the y pacman dot y so wherever pacman goes um, x will you know the, you just basically mirror his coordinates and uh, x gets the coordinate of pacman so if you right now the mouth uh, if you uh, look and it says visible uh, you, you basically don't see it uh, if I put visible and you start the game See, there's a, a dot in the middle of Pac-Man, which is that's the core. That's most of the uh, collision in the Pac-Man is coming from. So let me put this back again. The visible, not visible. So see, all these, all the collision that he can get, like he can collision with Blinky, the scared Blinky, collision with the pellet so on now for Blinky uh, when he clashed with Blinky and uh, basically he um, he played the sound the death sound and changed the backman sprite uh, to dead so he animates the dead sequence that I showed you earlier and he set the global variable freeze to be true so you can't move once in this state and same with the ghost and you basically jump uh, the, the start position of all the ghosts even the scared one so all of these you put a jump and then you change the scared the blinky back to regular So basically all of these are the, uh, the other ghosts. And I set the alarm to 60. So as soon as the alarm triggers, to, that's done. And it's going to put Pac-Man back to the starting position. And the jump. Uh, starting position and the, the variable global freeze is set back to false with the image speed of zero. Okay, and after you program uh, one one of the ghosts, I just uh, did a duplicate. And then just do the rest. So scared B is the same as scared P. You just change the name. Same thing with Blinky. See, you duplicate with Pinky, Inky, Clyde, and so on. That's what I did. Okay, moving on to Blinky. So you, uh, when you create event, you just set up direction. You can move to all four corners. Uh, and zero degree, direction 90, direction 180, and direction 170. I mean 270. And change the sprite uh, to that. On the step event, so basically this is where you execute the, uh, the ghost AI. And when see uh, over here of all all of these statements below, they have to meet this condition. So if global freeze equals to false, excuse me, if global freeze equal to false, so me if they're not uh, true, then they can execute this uh, this statement. And down here.
here if it's scared then you change it to the scared blinking and the end step is where it, it animates uh, so if direction is equal to zero and you change it to the right image if it's 90 you change it to the up image if it's 180 you change it to the left image and 270 is changed to the down image so when it collides with the wall it just bounces back and you do the script and goes to AI and on the port it just ports it to the other side uh, same as Pac-Man and door closed so when they're uh, on the door closed I put a condition where if it's scared then they remain inside the ghost house if they just uh, so they don't go there just uh, they, they just stay there and uh, they cannot get out else if the global freeze equal to true then the same thing as when they're scared same state Finally, if it's normal, then uh, they can get out. And when they can get out, they, you have uh, I put the change instant to door open. So when it's open, it's not basically solid. Let's see if I look here, the parent of the, uh, the door open is none, and it's not solid. But if you look on the uh, door close, the parent is the same as the wall, so they cannot cross it over. So, so after you uh, did all the um, the codes for Blinky, I, I just mirrored Pinky, Inky, Clyde, and Sue. Then, and I start with Scared B. Did some almost the same as Blinky's um, uh, setup, except um, you know the color and step in and use the same here. Scared sprite right, scared sprite up, scared sprite left, scared sprite down. It's almost the same. And when you did that, then you uh, then you replicate duplicate with the rest of the ghosts. The wall. Uh, not much. I just copied this. Uh, I don't know what's basically the function of having this in the game, but I had it anyway. It's, um, it's like. Uh, change the sprite block the, the block wall has two sprite I mean a uh, two image in it there's two and basically one out of 20 it changes it with a chance of one out of 20 perform the next step change the sprite to the second image. This is the like first image. I don't know what the significance is, but I, I copied it anyway. <laughs> like I said, uh, my skills with uh, Game Maker is you know, intermediate, and uh, so I only know what I, you know, uh, you know what what needs to be done from what. What I think, uh, so you know, I do apologize if you think that my code is sucks. Or, um, I know you could probably you could put like a better code, like one of the videos I see in the Pac-Man tutorial where you use the ghost parent, uh, but apparently I'm not doing that. <laughs> Anyways, uh, you know, you could uh, do whatever you want with this code once you. I'm gonna go there in this tutorial. Okay, next up, have the power pellet. 
I didn't put any codes in it. Palette, same thing. For these are just object. They don't have any significance. Last one is the uh, the alarm for the bonus. So the fruit when basically you create once you create it, it's gonna jump the fruit to uh, outside the room so you don't see it and set the alarm zero to five hundred. Once the alarm triggers, which is alarm zero, it's gonna port to the same location where Pac-Man is when you start the game and then change the sprite bonus to whatever they count and then it's gonna wait there for 500 uh, uh, steps so if you don't catch the ghost I mean the, the don't catch the fruit then it's gonna disappear once uh, alarm 7 triggers then it's gonna set it back to, to outside the room again and set the alarm to basically if you keep on just running on ma in the first maze you can you know it's, it goes in a loop and you can get every 500 steps a new uh, fruit if you want so and when Pac-Man is in collision with the fruit and and it, it does the jump sound the eat fruit sound and set uh, the variable fruit timer to 100 uh, which it goes to the, uh, the draw down here step there you go yeah the timer for the fruit is this one here if it jumps the fruit uh, which will trigger true and so on the step event I had an increment to decrement to minus one so every every step is minus one until it gets to zero when it gets to zero then you trigger this, set the global chomp fruit to false, which makes the fruit disappear on the draw statement. Let's see if we go here. If the global chomp is equal to true, then it basically displays this text. If it's false, then of course it disappears. So that's how I did it. So hey guys, uh, hopefully uh, this video is helpful and um, learn something from what I did over here. Uh, so like I said, I will include a video, I mean I'll include a uh, file, both executable and uh, a game maker file for this Pac-Man tutorial. So you can play with it, enjoy, and um, if, you, if you think there's a bug or any suggestion to make it uh, improve the game um, just let me know just drop you know, a comment and and if you like it just uh, subscribe to my channel and I'll see you on the next video thanks